Roma Wines presents Suspense. Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud. Your health, senor. Roma Wines toast the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the man in black, here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight from Hollywood, Roma Wines bring you a star, Mr. Gene Kelly, in a suspense play that tells of fear and suspicion and dangerous adventure from a long highway from California to New York. And so, with death, went along for the ride, and with the performance of Gene Kelly as a man named George Javery, we again hope to keep you in suspense. To 314? Yes, sir. I, I want a room. The name, sir? George Javery, but uh, I haven't got reservations. Oh? Well, I think we can fix you up, Mr. Javery, if you'll sign, please. Uh, sure. <coughs> Excuse me, friend. Yes? I couldn't help hearing your name, Javery, hmm? Oh, that's right. In the relation to Frank Javery of Cincinnati? Oh, mm. not that I know of. Oh. <laughs> kind of a funny name. No offense, you understand, but I just thought, you know. Sure, I, I know. Been doing quite a lot of traveling, haven't you, Mr. Javery? Huh? <clears throat> I see all them stickers on your bags. Oh, oh, yes, I've been out of the country. Room 610, 450 a day. Will that be all right, Mr. Javery? Sure. <laughs> you, uh, gonna stay in Reno very long? Uh, just overnight. Going east? Uh huh. You uh, driving? Yeah. Say, what do you want to know? Uh, thought I'd tip you off to a good place to eat, see? <clears throat> you, uh, like steaks? <laughs> when I can get them. Better stop at Harry's place, then. Best steaks between here and Chicago. Here's the address. I wrote it down for another fellow this morning, but he left before I could give it to him. Oh, well, well thanks. You, uh, driving back east alone? Yes. Say, uh, what did you say your name was? <laughs> I didn't, but it's Brown. Steve Brown. Well, look, Mr. Brown, if you want a free ride east, why don't you... Okay, no, no, no. I'm heading up to Portland, see? Oh, well, well, have a good trip, Mr. Brown. Same to you, Mr. Javer. Thanks. Don't forget to stop at Harry's place, Mr. Javer. I think you'll find it a very interesting spot. Very interesting. Mr. Javer. What is it? Did you notice a fellow with only one arm? No, where? I didn't think you did. He said he was a friend of yours. But don't have nothing to do with him, Mr. Javery. He's no friend of yours. He's no friend of anybody. Don't have nothing to do with him. Oh, here's your drink, Mr. Javery. Thanks. Oh, did your friend find you, Mr. Javery? What friend? A uh, one-armed fella. He was looking for you. He said I should keep my eye out for you. A one-armed fr- uh, one man, Mr. Javery? I know. There's no guest at the hotel that answers that description. I seen him coming out of your room, Mr. Savory. I don't know how he got in there, but I seen him coming out. You heard me. I'm checking out. If there's anything wrong... No, no, there's nothing wrong. I'm just checking out, that's all. But at three o'clock in the morning... Look, I I said I'm checking out. Now, now, please get my bags out to the car. Just put them in the back of the car. Yes, sir. Now, look, kid. For the last time. Do you know? I don't know nothing, Mr. Javery. Honest, I don't know nothing. Okay, okay, here. Gee, look, here he comes now. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Thanks, Mr. Javery. You, uh, going east, mister? Oh. Oh, it's you, huh? Say, what's the big idea? What big idea? Now, listen to me, my one-armed friend. I can't help having one arm, mister. All right, all right. But what's the idea of following me around? You've been following me ever since I got here. Oh. But I'm sorry about that, mister. So am I. Now, what about it? Well, you see, I'm kind of down on my luck. So I'm hitchhiking. I got to get east, and I heard you were going east, so... Ah. You are going east, ain't you, mister? Well, yes. Yes, I am. Do you mind if I come along a piece? Oh, all right, hop in. (laughs) 
Say, uh, there's one thing you haven't explained to me yet. Uh, what's that? What were you doing in my room? Hitchhiking? I was never in your room. The bellboy said he saw you come out. I don't know what he said, but I was never in your room. Oh. Well, it's kind of late to start driving, I guess. I don't mind. I'm used to night work. Oh. Say, uh, I don't think I got your name. Jones. One arm Jones, they call me mostly. You traveling far, Mr. Jones? Uh, as far as St. Louis. Uh huh. Have you been in San Francisco lately? No. No, I came by way of San Diego. Why do you ask, Mr. Javery? Oh, nothing. I thought I might have seen it. Uh, what's the matter? How did you know my name? Your name? <laughs> That's an old hitchhiker's gag. Hang around a hotel lobby and find out who's who and maybe where's heading, see? Yeah. See? There doesn't seem to be much traffic tonight, does there? No. Are you looking for something? Oh, just reaching for a cigar. Get your hand out of your pocket. I, I was... Get only... it out, I said. You don't have to pull a gun no. out. No? All right, Mr. Jones. Come on, let's have it. Watch your game. Game? Yeah, your game. Come on, spill it. I don't get it. Neither do I. I suppose you haven't been tailing me ever since I checked into that hotel. Well, I, I explained about the hitchhike. Get out. Out of the car? You heard me. Okay. But, Mr. Javery... What? Don't be too surprised if you see me again sometime. Good night, Mr. Javery. <laughs> Tonight for Suspense, Roma Wines bring you a star, Mr. Gene Kelly, whom you have heard in the prologue to Death Went Along for the Ride by Henry Denker and Ralph Berkey. Tonight's adventure in Suspense. In this brief intermission in the play, let's imagine we're listening to a conversation taking place at the smart Coral Beach and Tennis Club in Bermuda. An American about to depart for the States thanks his Bermudian friend for the gracious hospitality shown him, and in particular for the especially enjoyable wine his friend served. He remarks how much he'd like to be able to get some of that same wine at home. The Bermudian chuckles as he says, But my friend, that wine you enjoyed so much, it comes from the great wine districts of your own California. It is Roma wine. Yes, friends, Many Americans are still not aware that Roma wines are so highly rated in many foreign lands that they are imported to be enjoyed as rare luxuries. But here in America, we can still enjoy these superb Roma wines as a daily pleasure, well within reach of the most modest purse, with no high import duty, no expensive shipping costs included. That's why Roma wines cost you so little. Have you been overlooking the enjoyment these richly satisfying Roma wines offer? as a delectable beverage at any time, as the addition that can make any meal an occasion, as a sure-to-be-appreciated offering to your guests when you entertain. You get some idea of the great worth of these fine Roma wines when you learn Roma wines are America's largest selling wines. I'll spell the name for you. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now it is with pleasure that we bring back to our sound stage our star, Gene Kelly, as George Javery, in Death Went Along for the Ride, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. All right, put him up. Come on, get him up and step out in front of those headlights where I can see you. Come on, before I let you... Shoot, mister. Well, I'll... What do you want? Not to get shot right now. Oh. <laughs> oh I'm sorry. I... Kind of jumpy, aren't you? Yeah, maybe. Uh, were you going into this joint here? Well, I was. <laughs> well, come on, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. I think I earned it at that. Well, howdy, folks. Good to see somebody. I'm kind of late, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Black coffee, huh? 
How about you? The same, I guess. Look, uh, I'm sorry I frightened you. But... Say, what's your name? Eileen. Eileen Harrison. What's yours? George Javery. Say, uh, what are you doing walking along a million miles from no place at this time of night? <laughs> I started driving east in the $50 jalopy yesterday like a fool. It just fell apart on me. I was coming in here to phone or something. Oh, well, how far east are you going? Greenwich, Connecticut. I'm going to New York myself. Uh, you're welcome. I mean, if... Well, I... Oh, 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 look, if you don't like me, you can always get out and start to walk again. What have you got to lose? <laughs> well, all right. Thanks. And I could use a little company right now. Oh, there you are. Piece of pie? Piece of pie, bud? Huh? Oh, oh no. How about a hamburger? We got good hamburgers, you know. We got. No, no, no. Just be quiet a minute, will you? Be quiet? Yeah. What's the matter? Shh. Shut up, another two of you. Sure, anything you say. Say, what's the matter with you? I'm listening for something, that's all. What? There he comes. Hey, where are you going? That wasn't it. You know, what's going on, bud? You hot or something? Now there's a car out there. It's been following me for the last 200 miles. Yeah? How'd you know? I know it. I took a side road. He did, too. I tried to duck him, and he hung on. He kept following me. I, I'm sure that... Listen. Listen, that must be it now. now he, he's not coming in. He's waiting. For what? Me. Look. Look, Eileen, here are the keys to the car. Go out and drive it up the side entrance. I'll be waiting at the door. All right. No, but... no. Go ahead. He won't hurt you. Hurry. Okay. Hey, mister, you ain't in trouble, are you? I don't want no trouble, no, my keep your shirt on. You'll be all right. Here. Don't you want your change? No, I'll keep it. Hop in. I'll slide over. Thanks. Look back now, Dave. Seriously, that other car follows. I don't think so. Say, look, pal, I don't want to be nosy, but... Uh, Eileen... I, I wouldn't kid you. I don't know what it is. Is anyone following us? No, I don't think so. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, lights. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean it's someone following us. No? How fast are we going now? About 60. All right, watch. Hey, please be careful, George. I'll be careful. Is he coming? Uh-huh. I think he's gaining on us. Yeah, I thought so. Well, we'll see how much this guy wants to play. He had a pretty big car, you know. Yeah, I know. Is he still gaining? He's closing up pretty fast. Oh, I can't stand this much longer, and I'm going to do something about it. What are you going to do? I'm going to pull to one side, slam on the brakes, and see what happens. Hey, George! I'll force him into the ditch if I have to. It's what he's trying to do to us. Hang on. George! He's coming! You're going to hit him! I'm trying to! Come on, let's get out of here. He... He must have been killed. Yeah. Did you see him as we hit? Just for a second. You notice anything about him? Not much. Well, I did. He was a man with only one arm. Well, this is that Harry's place that guy told me about. You sure you like steak? Who doesn't? Well, this is the place for you, then. Finest steak to the side of Chicago, they tell me. Come on. Table for two, sir? Uh, yeah, please. Right this way. The whole thing amounts to this. Right here. Here's a nice table right by the window. That's fine, thanks. And, madame? Thank you. Uh, two steaks, please. Uh, both medium rare. All right? Yes, right. sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. George, to get back to our little problem. Our little problem? All right, so it's your problem and I'm stuck with it. Are you sure you don't have any enemies? How could I? I've been out of the country for over a year. I didn't have any when I left. Well, could there be any connection with that work you were doing with the Chinese government? Oh, not a chance. I, I uh, well, look, I don't know any secret plans, and I have no agent X-9. Uh, well, all that's out. Well, maybe it's all just a coincidence. Oh, sure. A one-armed guy tags me all over Reno, then says he's a poor hitchhiker. 
Then he acts like he's trying to pull a stick up, and then a hundred miles beyond where I've dropped him, he shows up in a big Cadillac. Just a coincidence. Call for Mr. Javery. George. Telephone for Mr. Javery. Call for George Javery. Yeah. Another coincidence. What do you suppose? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. George, don't. Come on, we'll both go answer it. Uh, are you Mr. Javery? Yeah. Well, that's good. They've been trying to reach you all day. All day? Yes, this is about the tenth call we've had for you. Uh, the phone booth is right this way. One little coincidence after another. Calling me all day at a joint I've never been in before in my life. George, don't answer it. Now, look, you just keep an eye out while I'm in the booth. All right. Uh, oh, <laughs> pardon me. Why, of course. Hello. 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 Can I help you, sir? Why, yes, I had a call on this wire, but... I'm sorry, but your party seems to have disconnected. Did you call them? Uh, no, 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 forget it. What was it, George? Come on, let's go out to the car. Well, what was it? I don't know. Whoever it was, as soon as I answered, they hung up. Come on, come on, there's a guy following us. The guy I bumped into at the phone booth. Oh... That's what that phone call was for. Get in the car, quick. Here he comes. Oh, oh, Mr. Javery. George is pointing something. It's a camera. Thanks, Mr. Javery. Hey, what's the idea of taking pictures of me? It's a hobby. I'll send you a print at the morgue. Have fun. This is one of the really bright spots of old Chicago. Yeah, a little too bright. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we present direct from 10 weeks run in New York, the world famed sharpshooter, Professor Glittenheimer. <laughs> George, he's good. I saw his act in Hollywood. He's quite a comedian. Well, that's swell. A little comedy had come in handy now. Oh, George, you promised me. Come on, relax. Okay. Oh, <laughs> he shoots at the light bulbs, and whether he hits them or not, they always break. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, blindfolded. <laughs> He didn't even aim at it. Sure, that's the point. Later, he's going to shoot straight up and the bulb in the back of him will break. <laughs> and now over my shoulder, the left shoulder. No, no, the right shoulder. That's harder yet. It's funny, isn't it? George, your glass, it's shattered. Come on, Eileen, we're leaving. Please, ladies and gentlemen, please. Performance will continue. Keep proceed, please. Oh, please, please, wait, sir. Don't leave. I'm terribly sorry. Won't you stay and finish your dinner? Uh, please, sir, our, our apologies. A most regrettable accident. Yeah? Only it wasn't. Wasn't? Wasn't an accident. That comic up there shoots blank cartridges. Well, of course, but... Yes, and what broke my glass was a bullet. And it didn't come from the stage. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good old Bear Mountain Bridge. Well, we're almost there. Yep. With any luck, we ought to be in New York by 10 o'clock. And the way you've been driving, I don't see how anyone could have followed us. Oh, why do you think I was driving that way? Gee, it's a beautiful night. Look at that moon. Yeah. Let's stop a minute. Why? Oh, I don't know. Just to look down at the water. All right. Ah, uh, it's been a long time since I've seen the old Hudson River. I guess I'd better turn off the lights. I'm not sure I'm allowed to stop in the middle of the bridge. Come over here by the rail, George. Gosh, isn't it lovely? Yeah, yeah, it really is. Oh, look at that boat down there. It looks, it looks a little. It... I wonder how far it is down to that water from here. Oh, I guess about 150 feet or so. I'm awfully glad you decided to come this way. Why didn't you? Oh, it's less traffic and not as many cars as on the George Washington Bridge or the tunnel. And, well, there's less chance of being spotted. 
You still thinking of that? Well, it's kind of hard to forget, isn't it? Just the same, I wish you would. It's not doing that. Uh, look, look. What? It's a car. It looks like it's going to pull up behind us. Georgie, you no, don't no, think I, I don't know, but if some monkey's looking for trouble, he's going to get it because I've had enough. What are you going to do? Now, look, I'll crouch down in front of the car here where he can't see me. He'll pull up behind us so his headlights will be on us if he's up to anything funny. Now, he's beginning to pull over now. Now, look, okay, okay. You talk to him. Stall him. That was safe. All right. But, George... Don't you know you're not allowed to stop in the middle of the bridge? Why? I just stopped a minute to look at the water. You alone? Why, yes. I thought I saw a man standing here with you just now. No. There's a California plates on your car, ain't there? Yes, I I just drove through from the coast. Hmm. You pick up any hitchhikers on the way? Uh, Anybody that looks like this? Like what? Like the guy in this picture. Well, that's the picture someone took at... I thought so. All right, sister, where is he? Right here, bud. George, look out, he's got a gun. Why, you... Now, let's see how good you are without a gun. George, the railing, he's trying to throw you over. He's George! Come on, kid, let's go. Well, we made it. Home at last. Home? This is the Bancroft Hotel. It's the only home I ever had in New York. Boy, take these bags. Now, sir, if you leave the key, I'll have your car garage for you. Yeah, sure. Here. Thank you. George, I could go home, you know. What? Travel out to Connecticut this time of night? (laughs) It isn't that far. Come on, you get a good night's rest right here. Then you can catch an early train in the morning. Well, all right. Yes, sir. You'll uh, wish a room then, sir? Uh, two rooms, please. Yes, sir. Will you sign here, please? Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mr. J... Oh, Mr. George Javery. What about it? N- nothing, sir. Only uh, we have your reservations. Reservation? But I, I... Oh, I get it. Another coincidence. Sir? Uh, skip it. George... Eileen, uh, look, uh, maybe you're right. You you better go on home. George, you're coming home with me. I, I'm sorry, Eileen, but this is journey's end, and I'm going to see it through. Well, then, so am I. Eileen. Please, George. Okay. Okay, come on. Well, what do you know? What? Our friend sitting over there by that post. The man who took the picture. Yeah, yeah. Last act coming up. Oh, clerk. Yes, sir? Uh, what room do I have? 706, sir. Uh, it's fine. The lady? Yes, sir. Room 614 for her. Front boy. This way, Mr. Javery. Going up? Six, please. George, shouldn't you call the police or something? And tell them what? Oh, I... I don't know. Now, look, honey, you get a good night's sleep, I'll be okay. I mean, after all, this is New York. Six out. Good night, darling. Good night. Seven. It's right this way, sir, to the left. Here we are, sir. Just put the bags over there, son. Uh, will that be all, sir? Yeah. Here you are. Thank you, sir. Hello, George Avery. <coughs> Took you longer than I expected. Brown. A man I met in Reno. What are you doing here? Waiting for you. And the day made Brown, that's Javery. Javery? Yeah, George Javery. <laughs> Javery, I can't think you thank you enough for what you've done for me. What I've done for you? Sure. You've been a great help. All right, let's have it. Look, Javery, you've come to the end of the road. But I think you're entitled to know why. <laughs> you don't know me, do you? I'm Bill Malone. Oh, Scarface Malone. Yeah, only I don't have scars anymore, see? That's the point. Took me two years and a lot of pain to get a new face. And I didn't get it just to look good in a coffin. Know what I mean? 
No, I'm afraid I don't. After a guy in my business has been away for a year or two, he's not always welcome back, see? And he generally finds out about it with a bullet in the back. That's why you struck me as a good idea. Oh, I did, did I? Yeah. I don't believe in taking chances, see? The boys thought I was coming east under the name of George Jiggery. Oh, so the one-armed guy and all the rest... No, he was one of my boys. And you were kind of rough with him, Mr. Jiggery. Well, he wasn't exactly playing beanbag himself. Jerry, he wouldn't hurt you. I just sent him to tell you so I'd have a line on where you were. After you dusted him off, I, it was just a break for me that you went to that steakhouse. Otherwise, I might have lost you. A candid cameraman, too, I suppose. Yeah. After I lost Jerry, I figured I wouldn't take any chances. Send a picture around to the boys. Like the guy that took a pot at you in Chicago. And the guy you tossed over the bridge. The boys that were out to get me, see? Only they didn't know all the time it was you. No chances. Know what I mean? Yeah. Only I can't exactly say I'm glad to have been of service. So if you drop that gun, I'll go. Not yet, Jibbery. There's just one thing more you can do. Yeah? Stand over by that window. What for? Stand over there and drop your hands. Boys wouldn't quite understand it if you had your hands up. The boys? Yeah. The ones I've been telling you about. When I pull up that shade, they're going to take a pot shot at me through that window. When they do, they'll get me. Only it'll be you. They'll never know the difference. Now, over to that window. They know you're already here, so move. You uh, don't mind if I sort of stroll, do you? After all, this is a surprise. Come on. Over to that window. And if I don't? I'll plug you. And if I do? You see, Malone, that's the trouble with your system. No incentive. You know what I... Don't make a move. George, is anything wrong? George! Get over there in that corner. Don't hurt her, Malone. Just going to lock the door, that's all. Taking no chances, see? Then here's some light so you can see what you're doing. What are you... <laughs> Oh. oh, it's all right, Arlene. It's all right, darling. No. Well, there lies our nemesis, the late Mr. Scarface Malone, otherwise known as the guy who never took chances. But he's dead. Yeah, yeah, smart guy. But he made just one mistake. He forgot that the door is right in line of fire with a window. George... What are you going to do? I'm going to call the police and explain this little drama to them. After all, I think it's about time people stop taking pot shots at your future husband. Don't you? And so closes Death Went Along for the Ride, starring Gene Kelly. Tonight's tale of Suspense. Mr. Kelly appeared through courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of The White Cliffs of Dover. When entertaining guests at your home, are you able to go into your aroma wine cellar and say, Which would you prefer, this delightful sherry or this sweeter, heavier port? Whichever of these or any others of the many equally fine Roma California wines you offered your guests, they would find you had poured a world of satisfaction into their glasses. If you are not one of the millions already enjoying these good Roma wines, don't put off this great treat another day. You'll be surprised at the tiny cost your Roma wine dealer will ask for such great enjoyment. Only pennies a glass by actual check. Now you can boast of your own private wine cellar, your private Roma wine cellar. And then, inspired by the great qualities of Roma wines, you'll add your voice to the swelling international chorus that says, Roma wines are truly magnificent. Let me repeat the name, R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is Gene Kelly. I hope you enjoyed our suspense show this evening. I always feel that it's a pleasure and privilege for me to appear here because most of us who act for a living consider this to be radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Next week, I know you will want to be listening when your star will be Mr. Orson Welles, who will appear in the Dark Tower a play written by those two very distinguished gentlemen, Alexander Wolcott and George S. Kaufman. And now just one more word. Fellow Americans, the attack for victory is on. You help make the victory more certain and bring it sooner when you buy more war bonds. 
Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. Next Thursday, same time, you will hear Orson Welles in... Suspense! Presented by Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.